How much are they priced uh, in uh, in INR? In, in INR, INR. Uh, this one I got at a huge discount, so that was only a thousand rupees. Uh, this one would be close to ten thousand. Ten thousand rupees for a knife. Yeah. And then this one would be seven or eight thousand. And as I was telling you, I pay only fifty rupees, or with a lighter, I get one knife free, and I use that. But now, but ten thousand is too much, no? But it's an investment in something that'll last you your whole life. Whole life? Yeah, these have twenty-five uh, year warranties on them. Ah, and uh, this is all your personal. Yeah, yeah. Oh, <laughs> no, all foreigners. Uh, um, do they like spice or do you like spice? I like spice. You like spice? I like spice, but it has to be flavorful spice. It can't. I'm not one to just eat a chili. Oh. Like I've seen some of the boys in the kitchen do. They'll just have like a bite of rice and then a big huge bite of chili, and I don't understand how they do that. However, rasam is one of my favorite things that our staff cook makes because it's spicy. But it's got so much flavor with the black pepper and the chili and the tomato and the coriander and the curry leaves. So personally, I can handle spice a lot more than most people I know, especially most people I know back home. Uh, but again, as long as it's a flavorful spice and not just spice, mm -hmm. if that and makes sense. <laughs> well, that, that does. Um, uh, what are your tricks uh, in the kitchen? Well, I showed you my trick about the onions and yes. how to dice it. Make sure you keep that root end in there. Um, one of my my main things that I always do is when I'm I'm cooking meats. If I'm doing like a whole roast, I I like to brine the meat for twelve hours beforehand. So the night before, I'll put whatever it is into a container and cover it in a solution of salt, sugar, water. And then whatever spice flavorings that I want to add, normally garlic, black pepper, sometimes rosemary, sometimes thyme, and just uh, leave it to sit for 12 hours in the fridge. And then make sure you bring it up to room temperature, rinse it off, and then when you're cooking it, you always have guaranteed nice juicy meat. It doesn't dry out and the cooking time is a lot less. So instead of roasting a chicken and having it take an hour and a half. You can have a nice, beautifully cooked, juicy chicken in 45 minutes. As less as 45 minutes? As less as 45 minutes. Because mm. the salt starts to break down the proteins, which in turn helps to ensure that the cooking is sped up. There's so many new things I'm learning. I'm, I'm planning to apply this at least, at least the brine thing. Yeah, yeah. brining <laughs> will make, and it makes things taste better. Because mm. it's injecting the salt and the seasoning from the beginning. Mm. No, um, this one uh, thing that always bothered me was there are so many uh, women cooks in the kitchen, in, in our houses, in families. Not so many women cooks are there uh, outside and earning yeah. uh, uh, professionally. Uh, what is your take on that? So I think a lot of that comes down to the fact that when the first restaurants were open, it was men that were opening these restaurants. And actually the first restaurants opened after the, during the French Revolution and just after. And they were literally places because of the food shortages where you could come in and you could get a bowl of soup or potage. And it was all being done by men because these men were trying to find something to do. And obviously the women had to stay home and look after the house and the kids and this and that. And that's something that hasn't really changed because society sort of sees women as people, if you're going to cook, you should be doing it for your family. Which, well, yeah, okay, that's fine. There's, what's to say that you can't do both? You can't cook for your family and you can't have a job in a kitchen and work. And I know a lot of women have problems with the, the high heat that you get in the kitchen. Mm. Like it gets really hot and it gets gross and there's yelling and I mean, it, 
it's stressful and I don't know, maybe it's just the type of person I am, but for me, I find joy in that stress. Whereas I know a lot of people, men and women, who would die in a kitchen because of all of those things. So I think most of it is just society and just it's the tradition that the women stay at home and cook for the family and the men go out and earn. And back in the day, one of the ways they earned was to cook for the nobility and to cook for those who had the money. So your uh, boyfriend must be a very lucky man, no? Uh, no. What? I'm, I work six days a week, 10 to 12 hours a day. I, I very rarely get to cook for him. He's lucky if I cook for him on Mondays. <laughs> so every day then who cooks? Well, we have his, his mom and we have, we have a cook at home and, and she does the cooking. But for the most part, eh, unless you, if he wants to eat my food, he has to come to the restaurant. <laughs> Okay, I had a uh, wonderful time with you, but you know what, I cannot let her go. I will, though I don't like anybody else in the kitchen when I am there, but I will take Todi and I will see what she can make uh, with maybe poster. And I will tell her what poster is. Mm -hmm. On that note, thank you so much ladies and gentlemen for being with us. And thank you so much Todi for coming into my house. Thank you so much for having me. It's been a real pleasure. Thank you. Goodbye. <laughs>